In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this very simple duotone double exposure effect. So to do that, you just need a couple images that are kinda of thematically linked. So this woman, girl here is screaming, yelling, and I have a tiger, leopard, whatever this is, that is yawning, but very similar type images. And I thought they would go well together. So the first thing we have to do is actually separate these images from the background. Now, you don't have to, but the way I'm gonna show you, um, it works out really well every single time. So you don't have to worry about what the background is. So to do that, we're gonna to go to the fourth tool down, the quick selection tool, and you're just gonna use select subject up here. Now, Photoshop does a really good job of selecting usually, but if it doesn't, like let's say you have an area that like sticks out like this that you don't want as part of your selection, then just go up here to the minus and paint it away like this. And if you have an area that kind of juts in like this that you need as part of your selection, then just go back to the plus and paint it, like push it out like this until you get the selection the way that you want. When you're good, just go up to select and mask up here and this kind of menu thing will pop up. If you don't see this red background like this, if you want it that way, then just go over to view and switch it to overlay right there. And then all we're gonna do here is kind of look at the edge. So this was the one that I kind of messed up and like trying to tried to fix there, but obviously didn't do a very good job. So if you have areas like this or like little patches like this in the hair, uh, then just go over to the second tool down right here and just kind of paint over them really quick. It should fix it. Uh, you don't have to be super exact, just kind of paint in there. I'll paint over the shoulder. You can see it helps it just kind of fix up the edges and usually does a really good job. Then what we're gonna do is just smooth it out a bit. So just drag this over and you can feather a bit if you want, just like a tiny little touch and then maybe shift back your edge a touch as well. And then we're gonna scroll down and go to where it says output two and change it from selection to layer mask and click okay. So that cuts out the subject and you can see where I painted over the hair here, there's kind of like hair missing now. So if you want to fix that up, we can go over to our mask and on a mask, as you can see, white is what we still see and black is what we've covered up or essentially kind of erased. So we're gonna go over to a brush, make sure it's white in the foreground. If we wanna paint things back in, go up to our brush, change the size so it makes sense, bring the hardness to about 70, 80% and just kind of paint back some of that hair so it's not you know, disappearing like that so crazy. So I'm gonna paint some of this back in right there and that should be good. I'm not gonna get into too much detail here because you'll see in a second, it doesn't really matter. So if you have some on the edge, just kind of leave it, it's fine. Okay, now let's go over to the other image and do the exact same thing. So I'm not gonna go through all the steps with you. You follow the same ones and then I will skip ahead to the part where we combine them together. All right, so once you have both images cut out, then we're gonna go to the one that is smaller of the two. So in this case, this one is 66.7% of, of 100% and this one is only 50. So this is actually the bigger image. So we're gonna go over to this one right here and I'm gonna go to my move tool just click on it and hold, drag it over to the tab of the other image, keep holding, drag it down, and then let go. And that'll bring the other image over. Then all we have to do is line it up at the bottom if it's cut off like mine, if it's an image like this, and then just go Control T, and you're gonna resize to the size that you want. Or you can scale the other image down, it's up to you. Click check to apply. And then for me, I just have to make a choice of which direction I want these things to go, because I don't want them both yelling, screaming, yawning, whatever, in the same direction. So I'm gonna flip the tiger leopard over here. So to do that, I'm gonna click on that layer, go up to edit, transform, and just flip horizontal. And then I'm just gonna move it over. So it's kinda in the opposite direction to her screaming, and it'll look like it's coming out of both sides of the head like this. All right, so our next step is gonna to be to add the background. To do that, we're gonna go over here to this little half circle thing right here, which is your adjustment layers. You're gonna click on it, go right to the top and select solid color. And I would suggest for now, just clicking either black, like sliding this all the way over to black, or just kind of like a matte black, like just a little bit off, like maybe up like that and click okay. And then obviously click on it and drag it so it's the bottom layer here, which means it's the background. All right, so at this point, we're ready to mess with our images and turn them into the colors that we want. To do that, we're gonna start by clicking on the top layer, 
going over to the right here, double clicking, and going up to where it says advanced blending and down to channels. Right here, you're gonna uncheck one of these boxes to start. So I'm gonna try this one, uncheck the red, which leaves green and blue, or together makes cyan. If I uncheck just the green, you'll see that it leaves red and blue, which leaves magenta. And then if I just uncheck the blue, it'll leave red and green, which turns into yellow over here. So for me, I'm just gonna uncheck the R, which leaves cyan and click OK. And then for our other image, you're gonna double click over here as well, bringing up the layer style menu again, and you're gonna uncheck the other two, whatever two you left. So I'm gonna unclick these two, and that'll leave red right here. Now, it doesn't matter which ones, but pick the combo that you think looks the best for what you want off the start. We're still gonna mess with the colors after a little bit more, but just create these as a starting point and click OK. So with whatever two colors you chose as your starting point, now we're gonna click on our top layer and go down here to adjustment layers, this little half circle thing, click on it and add hue saturation. Now in hue saturation, if we just slide the hue one up here, this slider, you can see that the colors will change. So it didn't really matter what two colors we picked there because now we can just use hue saturation slider here, the hue slider to get the colors that we want. And you'll notice that they'll change together in unison as complementary colors. So this green and magenta, if I keep going, you're gonna get like the blue and uh, orange that go together. And if I keep going, it'll be back to red and cyan, but this time flipped when it's way over here. If I go back to the middle, it's also red and cyan, but back to where we started. Now, that's okay if you want those complementary colors, but if you wanna mess with each color individually, then go up here where it says master, click on it and choose reds or whatever one of your colors is. So red, and now you'll see if I do this slider, it'll only change whatever was the red side. So all I'm gonna do is make it maybe a little more orange and then I can also go to saturation and pump up the saturation if I want. I would say leave the, the lightness unless you really want kind of a washed out image or one that's like really dark that kind of blends into the background a little bit more. Otherwise, just leave it around zero. I might just bring it back just a touch and then go to your other one and do the same thing. So my other one was cyan and I'm gonna go here and just kind of punch it up to be blue. So yes, I'm creating the complementary colors here, but I'm controlling how they look in the end. And then I'll pump up the saturation just a touch. And again, maybe knock it back just a little bit in terms of lightness. All right, so once you have your hue saturation set, we're gonna add another adjustment layer. This time it's levels. And you'll notice up here for levels that this middle one here, this will adjust your contrast overall, like your midtones. This one over here will make your darks darker. This one over here will make your lights lighter. This one right here will make your lights darker. And this one over here will make your darks lighter. So just play around in here and get the look that you want. And then just to fine tune each color a little bit more, I know this is gonna seem weird, but you're gonna click on one of your layers, doesn't matter which one to start, go down to your image adjustments, or your, your adjustment layers here, and add a black and white. Now it's gonna turn the whole thing black and white, so make sure you go up here to this little thing right here, which is a clipping mask. And that means that black and white is only gonna be applied to this image right here, the layer that's right underneath it. Then I would go to the other layer, do the same thing, click on it, add black and white. Again, make sure you put a clipping mask on right here. And now this one is only for this layer. And then on each of those adjustment layers, it'll allow you to slide these to fine tune the look of each individual color here. So. I'm gonna slide this red and not all the bars will do anything. Like right now, even though this is blue, I'm sliding this, it's doing nothing. So some of your sliders like this one, this one, this one, they don't do anything, but I know this one up here. So yellow for me is doing something and it looks very similar to what red is doing. So you can just play around to get, you know, maybe you want one that's like a little bit darker than the other. So play around here and get, again, just fine tune what you want and then just go to the other one and do the same thing. Okay, and then the very final thing you're gonna do is to go back onto your masks and just refine your edge a little bit more. So in this case, I just don't like 
this edge, like how sharp, like the straight line that her shoulder makes and kind of the haziness around the hair, kind of maybe in here too. So I'm going to go on the mask, go to a brush, make sure it's black in the front. So click this little arrow if you need to, and then change your brush size to whatever you think works best. So I'm going to go pretty large brush and I'm going to make sure my hardness is somewhere around just like 50 for now so that I can go in here and just kind of wipe away. Oh, I'm going to make sure my opacity is most of the way up. I'm going to say 80%. So I can just kind of wipe away that little haze there. So her hair kind of just blends into the background a little bit more. Maybe just wipe out a little bit there. I might, no, I'm going to leave that. And like I said before, uh, maybe I'll drop down opacity back down here and I'm just going to fade in the shoulder here. So it's not just that sharp line. So just fade it in a little bit more between how it goes from the lion, tiger, leopard to her. And then I'll probably just do a little bit of the same around the ear here, like along this edge for the lion, tiger, leopard. Now, if you make a mistake, like let's say you really erase something and you don't like it, you can always flick back to white and just be careful because if you do that, then you're going to get some of the background back that you had before. So you may have to go back and forth between black and white and just refine your your painting here to get the the edge that you want and then if you really want you can do some final final touches by clicking on your very top layer and then holding shift clicking on your bottom layer going control j to make a copy of all of it and then control e to merge them down to one layer right click on it convert it to a smart object and then go up to filter camera raw filter now Camera Raw Filter is basically a one-stop shop for a bunch of image adjustments. I'm just going to deal with the ones that are at the very top right here, starting with Vibrance. I'm just going to kick up the Vibrance a little bit to have my colors pop a little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit of clarity and texture to bring out some of the details, especially in the fur and like some of this kind of string stuff that goes over top of her face. And then I'm just going to mess around with a few of these things up here. Like maybe I'll play around with the highlights to see if I want it kind of down a little bit, maybe my shadows. You can go up here and mess around with the temperature to make it a little bit warmer or cooler or whatever. So yeah, just play around with whatever sliders in here to get the image looking the way that you want and then click OK. And that's it. That's how you make a simple duotone double exposure in Photoshop. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you next time.